All right, boys and girls. Wow. Last one. This is number 11 on the paper four. Cambridge IGCSE from 2014. We're going to use our fancy Dixon Ticonderoga number two with an almost worn out eraser to knock this last one out. This one has to do with quadratic expression, quadratic equations. Uh, this is vertex form to get vertex form. There's a couple ways you could do it. Um, completing the square, all kinds of things you can do to get a uh, vertex form. We could also just find the vertex using the formula and then plug those numbers in, right? Um, let's go ahead and do it. This problem is worth two, four, eight points. Eight points is a ton. That is uh, often the difference between somebody that's being successful and unsuccessful. So this is our last problem, as I was saying, for paper four. If you're an IGSE, IGCSE, Cambridge math student, ninth and 10th grade, uh, this old test, these old tests like this could be a fan fantastic resource to passing. If you pass, means that you have demonstrated on an international scale that you're ready for college level mathematics. That means that a lot of those barriers that are facing students that math offers aren't gonna be barriers for you. Man, I'm excited about it. Let's do it, ready? Uh, so, uh, Let's do this one right here. We're gonna, we're gonna, well, I don't know. How should we do this? Uh, I guess we could complete the square. Let's complete the square. Why not? Let's just do it. All right, so um, let's see. By completing the square, we're gonna take half of, so look, we have to figure out, oh my gosh. So x squared minus three x plus one. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna rewrite it. You wanna uh, leave some extra space there. Now we have to take half of b and square it, and add it, and subtract it. Check that out. Look at that hotness right there. Okay, all right, we got this, we got this. Um, so now, x minus 3 over 2 squared, and then this is 4 over 4, and 4 over 4, right? And it was a plus 1 and a minus 1. So that's going to be 5 over 4 minus um, 5 over 4, which is 1.25, 5 over 4, either way. So we got we got 1 and a half and negative 1 and a quarter. Now, um, uh, let's see, it says write in form. So we're not actually being asked for the vertex. So here's what we're going to do. It's going to be x minus 3 over 2 squared minus uh, 5 over 4. And you could write it this way if you wanted as well negative 1.5 squared minus 1.25. I prefer the fractions for this one, but it doesn't matter. Either way, now you could also use the formula. You could do negative b over 2a. That's going to give you the x. Um, it'll give you that number right there. Uh, it'd be the opposite sign, so you'd have to be careful of that. And then you could take that number and plug it in and do the math and get the other number. But uh, we did the complete the square, which I think is probably better. All right, now find the coordinates of the minimum point. Okay, so check this out. The reason I know that this function right here has a minimum is that it's quadratic. So it's going to be a parabola. It's either going to go up like this or it's going to go down like that. And it's either going to have a minimum or it's going to have a maximum. And either way, this is the vertex, right? And the vertex, this is the x and this is the y. It's the opposite sign, um, and the reason I know it's going up is because the leading coefficient, a, is positive. So all we got to do is, so there we go. Now you could put 1.5 and negative, you know, 1.25, but remember, opposite sign for the x-coordinate. Next up, buttercup. So this one's a little tricky. We've got this graph right here. We've got point a, which is negative 1, negative 3, point b, which is 4, 2. The instructions say... The diagram shows a sketch of y equals x squared plus px plus q. And it gives us point A, point B are both on, on the graph. Find the values of p and q. Well, uh, this is a tricky one right here. It's worth four points. That means there's a lot of work involved with this. So check this out. Here's what we know. We know that this is negative 1, negative 3. And we know that this is 4, comma 2. We also know that this x and that y are a solution to this equation. This x and this y are also a solution to this equation. So look, check this out. We know that y equals negative 3 when x is negative 1. We know that that's true. This is true because it's a point on the graph. So it's a solution to this equation. Um, we can simplify this a little bit, right? So this is going to be a 1 
and we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, right? So we're going to get negative 4 equals negative p plus q. Let's go ahead and just do this. Let's do negative 4 plus p equals q. Oh, look at that. All right. Not really sure how we're going to use that yet, but that's pretty simple. Now let's do the same thing for the other, shall we? Let's do it over here. So here's what we got. Uh, when y is, t y is 2 when x is 4. Let's see. It's plus p times 4 plus q. So this is going to be, let's go ahead and uh, simplify this. This is going to be 2 equals 16 plus 4p uh, plus q. Now here's the thing. Uh, q is equal to this, right? So I'm going to put that right there, which is right there. So that's minus 4 plus p. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and clean this up right here. Um, oh, that's 12, right? That's 12. These two make 12, right? These two make 12. And so I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. That's going to give me negative 10 equals 5p. Ah, uh, negative 2 equals p. Boom, done. Okay, now, uh, if that's true, if that's negative 2, then q is negative 6. Man, how fancy is that? Wow, this, this pencil did, did, done did service good. Man, I'm glad this is math, not an English test. So anyway, um, that's it. That's the whole test, all 11 questions. I hope uh, this has been helpful for you guys. If you're having trouble, just reach out, let me know. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe, all that kind of happiness. If you want, I don't really care. This is to help you guys. And uh, anyway, until next time, uh, later, skater.